Cooking Casseroles for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. <laughs> look at him, how happy he is. You're normally very happy. You sat in front of the camera, you look like a miserable bastard. No, I'm right. It's been a while, this. You, you snubbed me recently. I interviewed you in Gibraltar. Gibraltar? Gibraltar? No. Yes, I interviewed you. No, you never. How much? I'm pretty sure you never interviewed 20 quid. An interview as well. Well, this is good viewing. Come on. How are you, Darren? I'm, I'm, I'm well. This is... Um, so, am I right in thinking this is the last official bubble? I think the, the next show... I nearly slipped up then. I don't know if it's been announced. <laughs> well, no, there's Newcastle coming up next month. I think Eddie Hearn's yeah, already so, said that. OK, he said it. Um, that's not a bubble, though, is it? I don't know. I shouldn't think so because the laws are relaxing, etc. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be... You know, it's going to be weird. I, I've enjoyed the bubbles, as most people who follow me on social media might have noticed. It's, it's been a good crack. Uh, we've forged some good friendships, haven't we? Me and you are like besties now. No. Always besties. Yeah, true. I was there at the Brentwood Centre. Supporting Danny Butler. <laughs> Danny Butler's my mate. I was supporting him. I'd, I'd never met you, so... Oh, hold on, if me and Danny Butler fought now, who'd you want to win? May the best man win. <laughs> But yeah, answering your question, I'm good, mate. <laughs> OK, uh, recap from the weekend. Um, much talked about fight, obviously, before and obviously after between Billy Joe Saunders and Canelo. Uh, we saw exactly how good Canelo is and Billy Joe Saunders had good moments in the fight. Um, I think for rounds five, six and seven kind of showed what Billy Joe's about. But ultimately, it was... Canelo, in many people's eyes, pound for pound, that was victorious. Yeah, I, no, I, I, I think I heard Froch say, I don't think he loses unless he does something crazy, like goes up to cruise away or something like that. I don't think he gets beat, or, not any time soon anyway. Um, the fight itself, yeah, I thought, um, you know, it impatches Billy Box well. You know, he's, we, we knew the plan was to always move and, and try and frustrate Canelo. I think the build up, was quite obvious that he was trying to get under his skin and get him to see the red mist and uh, and fight out of character. But Canelo just proved why he's the best out there. He didn't really lose his temper at all. Boxer a plan, just you know, methodically broke Billy down. Um, but you know, like I say, Billy like, Billy did have his moments. But it's just so hard to keep him off. You can't hurt Canelo. Um, and it was just a brutal shot. And I must say, I pat myself on the back. Um, Myself and Chris Lloyd called it. You know, we picked up on the uppercut. He, he's so good. He does something that you're not really advised to do, and that's lean back in boxing. Because um, obviously, you can, if someone steps in with a double jab or, you know, double jab backhand, you can get caught. But what Canelo does, he keeps his chin down as he does it, leans back, and then he just throws a vicious uppercut. And um, it proves to be a very damaging shot, and the injury looked horrific. And. Um, I think when you look back at the fight, ultimately, Billy can be proud of himself. He put up a good performance and it was a horrific injury that, that closed the show. Um, but, w I mean, what an unbelievable um, event. The, the, the crowd, the atmosphere, um, it was just it was brilliant. And it's, it's, it's great looking at that and thinking we're not far off having something similar here you know hopefully you can get the second AJ Fury fight if that if the first one ever happens and we get uh, very lucky enough to have a second one imagine that at Wembley Stadium so look I think the event as a whole was good the fight was good um, boxing is looking very good um, let's talk about obviously you're semi-qualified to talk about this because you're, you've been a part-time trainer haven't you if you want to call it that, yeah, it was forced upon me, I must say. But <laughs> Well, OK, so, you, listen, whether you've a part-time or a full-time trainer, etc., you, you, you've not necessarily been in that exact situation, but you can envisage a situation like that where you, as a trainer, have to make a decision with your corner team, yeah, etc., yeah. uh, which was done the other day, and the decision to pull Billy Joe out... Um, it seems to be the correct one. Absolutely. Uh, when you've got someone who, you know, has seen blood like Canelo did, to go out with that kind of injury, uh, or to let your fighter go out with that kind of injury, is, 
would would have been a terrible decision. Um, I mean, that that's a horrific injury, and to get another full blown shot on that, who knows what could have happened? You have to remember we're fighters, and we we leave it leave it all in the ring. Um, but you have to remember this is a sport, and uh, Billy's got a family, and. Um, the corner, see it fit to, to pull him out, and it was obviously the right decision. And for for people to give him stick, the big fat fuckers at home with their cans of beer and their Harry bows next to him, saying, "Ah, oh, you know, you get in there." Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's laughable, but um, I, I'm I'm pretty sure <laughs> Billy's not going to be too concerned with what they're saying. Um, but look, they they done the right thing. I think 100. percent I think it was the right decision. Um, I don't know if it was Mark or Ben. Well, I think it, from Billy Joe's statement, it looks like it had some input from Ben Davison as well. Uh, we, we don't know the exact kind of conversations that were going on, but just by reading Billy Joe's statement that he put out two days ago, it seems like Ben had input in that decision to, uh, to pull Billy from the fight, um, obviously alongside Mark Tibbs. Yeah, well, well done to Mark and well done to, to Ben. Uh, for having his, his involvement in, on, on making the correct decision. Look, I remember when it happened, seeing the swelling, but I said straight away that it's like a dent in his face. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've never really seen that before. You've seen the pictures. Um, terrible injury. But I think the big question is now, what does Billy do next? If I'm honest, I'll be very surprised if we see him fight again. Personally, I know he's a fighter. Um, you know, from a fighting family, you know, he's been doing it since he was a kid, but he's achieved everything and he fell at that, that you know, greatest pound for pound spot. But he's, if he, if he was to retire, he's been a two weight world champion, he's got bundles in the bank. You know, enjoy life, get fat and enjoy life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what, what a career. I personally don't think he will retire. I think after he's had even his. With that, even with the injury? I mean, that, that's going to yeah, take some Depending on how that, how that heals just think, and how quickly that heals as well, because he's like, what, 30, 31 now, so... Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Now, at, at that age, he's still a young man, but um, it's going to take... When you, when you get a bit older, you need to be active. You need to be fighting all the time. And I know he's a quality operator, Billy, but when you get to that age, it does take a little bit longer to find your time and your distance and your speed starts to fade just ever so slightly and I think it's so busy uh, it's so important to be busy when you're getting to that stage of your career and Billy's obviously going to have to be out I mean he's not going to fight in a year I'll be you know it just ain't going to happen um, so then you know the weight's going to pile on he's got to get back in the gym and get fit again I just feel with everything he's achieved will the desire still be there and um, I've heard talk not talked, but people calling for Eubank return. I mean, with the time that Billy's going to have out the ring now because of the injury, um, I just don't think it suits him. I just don't think that fight, if I was a Billy Joe Saunders fan, I wouldn't want that fight. Um, because if Billy was to lose that, I think it would haunt him forever. Don't you think? I just don't, like, I think a loss to a Chris Eubank Jr. Would, would really do him in. So and I just think, where, like, where do you go? He's, he's a two-weight world champion. He's not going to move up. He's not going to move back down. I mean, he's got bundles of money. Why fight again? I just, I just don't think... I, I, I just don't think there's anything left to prove to himself, to, to anybody. I just think, enjoy, enjoy the rest of your life. He's never going to have to work another day in his life, is he? Well, we don't know how it's going to pan out. I just think... My personal opinion is, knowing Billy Joe, I just he wouldn't want to go out on a loss, even if it's Canelo, whoever yeah, it was, yeah. he wouldn't want to go out on a you loss. Know him better than I well, do I just get a feeling we'll see, but it's all dependent on how this heals, how quickly it heals, and when he can resume training. It's very early days. It's literally we're talking about something that happened four days ago. So I think give it a few months, and it could be one of those, right? That. You, you don't see nothing of Billy for four years and all of a sudden there's a new kid on the block and then Billy starts shouting his name. I wouldn't be surprised if something like that happened. You know, you don't see Billy for like three, four years and then he ends up fighting somebody. Uh, but I don't think we'll be seeing him in the ring anytime soon, if, if at all. We should see, uh, we should wait and see what happens. Um, just a final... Sorry, keep moving. 
Every time I move. It's your head. Every time I move. I think it's your hair. It it's grows. Um, yeah, uh, interesting card this week. Obviously, Steffi Ball sitting over there. Um, it's terrible that Terry Harper wasn't obviously able to fight this week. Uh, we wish her a speedy recovery. But uh, Boetsy in action. There's three European title fights. Uh, should be, uh, as you people from Barnet say, double lively. Double lively, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the main event, uh, I'll be brutally honest, uh, Joshua Boatsy has to look very good, has to look destructive, and has to have a big fight next. Um, I think, other than the Calix fight, I think he had about 14 months out, didn't he? Fighting Ray, was it Ryan Ford before that. Um, Calix, I, I have to admit, when I watched Calix, uh, Boatsy's last opponent, doing my bit of prep, I thought, do you know what? He ain't bad. He could cause Boatsy a, uh, a few problems, and he did, didn't he? They got the job done in what the seventh round, but now I think he needs to look good against Dos Santos, who, if I'm honest, couldn't find much on him. I've, I've been trying. I see a little clip of him sparring. Didn't look bad, but I, I expect Boatsy to get the job done, look brutal, and then I, I think it's time then. We need to see him in some sort of big fight, an eliminator or some meaningful fight. Um, Callum Johnson. A Callum Johnson, a yard if he's still knocking about, or a big fight, either a massive domestic fight, or or I'm talking gatekeeper, world title eliminator. We need to see him in a big fight now. You know, he, he needs momentum. He's got to get going. Um, I'm a big fan of Boatsy, but now I just want to see him unleashed. I don't want to see him in this kind of fight. Um, but I, I'm assuming it is difficult to, to, to get Boatsy matched. Um, it's not so difficult when there's a meaningful title on the line, like a big world title, but um, he needs to get one and he's, and he's got to get busy. He's just, I want to see more of him. I'm a big fan. Um, yeah, and um, the, the rest of the card as well. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You fire Cunningham, Richards, the, the Carriolis. Was you? The Carolis? Carolis. The Carolis. Um, who, I must say, I watched his world title win against. Frimberg, uh, Frimbutz, that do. Frimbutz, Frimbutz. I, I'm terrible pronunciation, and um, he's, I'll tell you what, he's an hourful. He's um, it'd be, it's a good step up for Laroni. Uh, he's an hourful. He's a former world champ. He's um, he's he can hit. He's strong. He's experienced. So what are you laughing at? Did you call him Laroni? Laroni Richards. Laroni, Laroni. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Lerone Richards. <laughs> Lerone. You went Lerone. <laughs> Listen yeah. to it back. You went Lerone, I'm Lerone Richards. I'm terrible pronunciation. I'll just, I'll, I'll use the E. Lerone. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Sam or someone was here now. Um, we'll look forward to Saturday yeah, night anyway. I, I am. And McCarthy as well. I thought it looked good against Turkey. And look, I don't know why I'm trying with these names. I don't, look, look, yeah. Um, Lagoon, Lagoon, was it? <laughs> McCarthy's last opponent. Um, I'm not going to pronounce it in case it's um, wrong now, and I'm going to look silly. I'll tell you what, it's one of them shows that um, it's a dark horse. I think it'll be, I think it'll be entertaining. Uh, and like I say, just expecting and wanting Boatsy to put on a dominant display and f move on to a big one, a real big fight. OK, Darren Barker, I will let you get back to your activities. Not much going on, mate, to be fair. It's a quiet day. It's a rapid test, wasn't it? So usually I'm in quarantine, don't get out until tomorrow morning, but I'm in here, I'm out. And uh, you're tormenting me. Darren Barker, thank you very much for talking to Great IFL night. TV and we'll catch up with you again soon. Have a good day, have a good day. I'm on the Arsenal. Oh, it's Chelsea Arsenal tonight. You want a little friendly bet? On camera? Yeah, how much? I'll tell you what, should we do, because this is on camera, we're better off not doing it financially. Why don't we do it a forfeit? Oh, no. You'll take it too far. No, I won't. We'll do it now. Should we do, I mean, the go-to, I guess, sitting at a bar is probably the loser does a double shot of the winner's choice. I mean, I'm looking there and it just kind of makes sense. Okay. I agree. Get your hand in. No, no. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, Darren.